And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to... The creator of the up of the upcoming of the upcoming manga st manga style adv adventure known as Shotgun Samurai, he is the he is the one and only not Monkey Madness, not not even not even Knock Madness, but it is Donkey Madness. How you doing today, man? Hey, hey, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for thanks for coming on. I I didn't. I I couldn't have. I couldn't have realized that do, that um doing an interview with si with cider hype would end up um uh, make would end up making so many waves. Oh really? Oh, I'm glad it did. I mean, I love listening to cider talk. He has so much passion in his work. Um, I hope I can uh, follow that up. <laughs> um, I'd say I'd say it's big shoes to fill, but I'm six six. Every 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 shoe I try and fill is big. Oh my god! I won't say how tall I am, but. Uh... Say I need probably several of my shoes to fit in there. <laughs> oh. So I'd like to start with the humble beginnings, in a sense. Yes. Um. What? Um. Now, Shotgun Samurai is is very much um, manga influenced. So mm -hmm. I'd like. So I'd like. I'd like you to walk me through your journey into the wonderful world of Weebery. <laughs> Weebery, actually, um. Well, I am actually part Japanese, so I always I always uh, joke around that it's impossible for me to be a weeb. I am just enjoying my tradition. <laughs> so, <laughs> although I am born and raised in America, so first and foremost, I am American. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, I, I I've always grown grown up with Japanese culture. Like I said, uh, my grandparents would always send us Japanese videos. Um, we would always just watch them. There were no subtitles. I don't speak or understand Japanese, so I just looked at the pictures as a kid and just went, wow. Uh, like a lot of Power Rangers, a lot of, um, I don't know, like Doraemon, Ultraman, all that stuff. So I had a very, I was very, uh, uh, what you would call it, exposed to the like, Japanese childhood uh, TV shows mm -hmm. like, growing up. Yeah. And then as I got older, you know, I, I, I got with the typical... Dragon Ball Z, uh, you know, whatever I can find on TV at the time. I didn't have cable, but Dragon Ball Z was on at like 7 a.m. on Sundays on one of the network channels, which is random now that I think about it. But, uh, yeah, we, we would catch that Pokemon, would watch a lot of that, and then just kind of went on from there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and I, mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess uh, mostly a lot of video games too. That's kind of that's kind of weeb adjacent, isn't it? Yes. I'm, yeah, pre I'm pretty okay. sure. I'm pretty. Sh I you want to know you want to know something that I will always find funny. What? Um, I have I have I have seen I have seen certain I've seen certain people um go 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 on go on quite a bit at quite a bit at length about how they want nothing to do with it. With anything at with anything anime and they just and they besmirch we and they say a lot they say a lot of shit towards towards we towards weaves whether deserved or not and then, <laughs> I, and then I look at the and then I look at their catalog and it's a bunch of and it's a bunch of Nintendo and Sega shit mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly I always felt that it was like like people like oh you do like anime I'm like I don't watch too much anime but I play a lot of video games and I especially like Nintendo and I feel like they're in the similar family. Well, when what when what when one particular instance of of the, of it, um, you have with a lot some one thing inspired by the other. That's what. That's one of the many reasons I don't like the term JRPG. 
okay, because there's a lot of uh, influence from both sides into the RPG genre. Yeah, um, I remember. I remember when. I remember when extra credits tried to claim that the JRPG um, has has its roots in visual novels. Which, um, if any, anybody who believes that, I got a bridge I want to sell you in Brooklyn. <laughs> um, no truth. Truth be told, it start. It started when wizardry became a bigger deal in Jap wizard the wizardry series, especially the first one, um, proving grounds of the Mad Overlord became a bigger deal in Japan than it did in the States or in um, Europe. And eventually stuff like the Black Onyx, which was a wizardry knockoff made in Japan, would, co would come out. And that served as the foundation for um, Dragon Quest. Oh, in, in fact, okay. um, Yuji, Hori was Yuji Hori, when he created that, when he created the first Dragon Quest, he was tasked with creating a wizardly, a wizardry-like game for the family computer, i.e., Famicom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's that's why it that's that's why um that's why Dragon Quest has that as that front-facing perspective in um in. Um, battle scenes, and it's why you, oh it's why you have the first-person dungeon set up in games like um, Shin Megami Tensei or the original fantasy or the original Fantasy Star, and even a good chunk of the Fantasy Star is up and up, th um, include up till um four, have have that kind of set have that kind of front-facing setup. Um, and that that and makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's one it's one of those things where just uh, the um. The DNA, the DNA of the DNA will will be will be will be somewhat consistent if you know if you know where the if you know where to look. Yeah, um, like I heard, like I heard even like um, like anime too was inspired by uh like American cartoons like Betty Boop. I do. That's why they have big it eyes. Is, it is well. It is well. A lot of it ties to Osamu Tezuka, one of the three gods of manga. And oh, okay. He's cited um, the those are those early Disney cartoons as well as his belief that the I, I, as he put it the eyes are the window to the soul for mm -hmm. this for the stuff that he would create, and of course the breakout with that was Tetsuan Adam or as we know it here in the states Astro Boy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there was there was also Tetsujin Twenty Eight or Gigantor, which had a short run. On NBC of all places, oh. uh, way back, way back in the day. But, yeah, they um, showed Gigantor for like a week on Toonami. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, which whether or not it counts as the whether or not it counts as the first as the first giant robot series is debatable, but it cer it certainly helped po it certainly helped popularize the concept. Mm -hmm. Um, but. It's for, but it's, but um, the and now now we ha now we have a whole a whole generation that gr that um had their, that had their first introduction to to an to animation through through cl through classic anim through classic anime and they're going to be that's that's what's going to be the um, crux of of their creative work. Um. Again, that whole that trying to do so trying to do that whole east west thing is ultimately pointless. Um, yeah. But I um, you've probably gotten this question a fair a fair bit of times, but I mm -hmm. feel I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, given the given the setup, was Ninja Scroll an influence for you? <laughs> Actually, I watched it after I started writing it. So to get influence, so in it wasn't initially in the initial concept. I just, uh, you know, I was looking for inspiration later on in the story because this is a this is a long book. It's about two hundred and fifty pages right now. So, uh, so I looked. I was, you know, in my search for inspiration, I watched Ninja Scroll because I haven't seen it up until that point, and I thought that was something that needed to be fixed. Um. Oh. Which I, I can I can certainly get I can certainly get behind that. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, so I was that, I was shocked. I had... That um that brings me to kind of the origin story of 
this particular comic. Um, was it a was it a case where you had where you had a character idea in your head and that and everything kind of spilled out from there, or was there was there a different route? Actually, yeah, the uh, the conception of this idea is not um, not ordinary, but uh, so basically, um, it start. I, I came we came up with it in college. Like uh, me and a friend of mine, he was doing a presentation about cosplay in his public speaking course. And he didn't have a costume. And I was like, why aren't you dressing up as a costume? And he was like, I don't got one. And then he, he's Japanese, so he had, you know, the, the, the robe, the yukata, it's called. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, you got that. And I had a, I had a toy shotgun. Uh, we went to a small college, so people didn't really care too much about uh, gun imagery, you know. So <laughs> we got away with it. And, um, and I was like, why don't you just be the shotgun samurai? And then he was like, because that doesn't exist. And then I went over to the whiteboard, and I drew it on the whiteboard real quick, and I said, it does now. And that's how we came up with Shotgun Samurai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that, we, uh, after he did his, you know, after that night, I went and I drew the first three pages of Shotgun Samurai really quickly. And then photocopied it in the school printer and just stapled it together. And then we handed it out in the beginning of his class so that people and people were like, what the heck is this? I wasn't even in that class. So everyone was like, who is this guy? And I was just handing him out just to. And then when, when he went up to do the presentation, everyone was already, you know, prepared for shotgun samurai. Mm -hmm. And that's how we and people loved the idea. Everyone was like, I love this, this character. I love this concept. Uh. Are you going to make more? And I said, yeah, sure. Why not? So we sat down and we, we started talking about it, me and a friend, and, we, um, and ideas just started coming out. And then we realized we were sitting on a gold mine here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that was the, that's the initial concept. And then, uh, so it started off as that. And then we tried to make it into movies, actually live action movies they're on youtube if you search shock and samurai on youtube you should mm -hmm. find it um yeah so uh we tried to do it at first as movies oh, so we made two of them two 20 minute movies uh and you know i thought they were great everyone loved them you know for what they were you know they're horribly crudely made they look like they were made by some guy who has no idea what they're doing because it's true i just had a story and i had my iphone and, uh, and yeah, and then kind of after I was done with, after, uh, we made, I made those movies, it was so much work to get everyone together to just make these movies. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to draw this thing because I don't have time and energy to make movies anymore. So now it's going to be a comic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that was what, four or five years ago. And I've been pretty much, um, Hammering out pages ever since, and uh, right now is kind of the culmination of the of that. Is at, at uh, 250 pages, and I thought this is the perfect time to put it all together in one big uh, graphic novel. Now, so, yeah. I'd I'd also yeah? see um, when I was doing my when I was doing my research, I had also seen that you at that um the that there was a webtoon link is that where you initially put this put up the sh project yes yes i initially put them on webtoons um uh yeah i tried i tried many any kind of web comic uh website i i found to like you know put them up yeah to like you know just kind of you know see if see if it's what people liked and mm. i thought it did pretty well now when it comes now obvious obviously with with this particular setup, um, when it when it comes to go when it comes to going full into a a um, comic setup, I see yeah. I look at the art and I see I see a lot of, I see a lot of the stuff that I would expect from a, from a feudal setup, but I also I also see some more, some decidedly not decidedly not feudal matters, which what are, the things that I'm reminded of in this are. Are, is the kind of futuristic yet feudal approach that you'd see in, say, um, Samurai Seven or Afro Samurai, um, 
were those particular series a bit of an influence when it came to, uh, and as and to a lesser extent, some of the old Ninja Gaiden games? Were those kind of an influence for you? Uh, I would definitely say much more on the uh, Ninja Gaiden uh, aspect. Mm-hmm. Uh, Afro Samurai, uh, a little bit, mostly. You know, it's it's easy to see the parallels between my character and <laughs> Afro Samurai. Oh, and uh, yeah, it it is. It definitely takes place in um, feudal Japan, but I don't uh, I don't want to spend too much like uh, I guess energy on what specific time period it is mm-hmm. you know i just want to it's just i just consider it old japan samurai during the samurai time just so we can have more fun with it just say, you can just say sengoku and you and you'll you'll have satisfied the purists to an extent and the ones okay who are, I'll, I'll, the ones who aren't satisfied fuck them yeah okay I'll, I'll 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 go with that thank you it's the sengoku period yeah i mean yes yeah, I mean, yeah, the um, Yasuke, which came which came out not too long ago, is tr- is trying to is trying to be in a in a similar time frame, but it but you also have friggin' Max in it. Oh yeah, I saw the trailer for that. That's the thing on Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I, didn't, I didn't catch it. Is that good? Um, I thought it, I thought it was decent, although some of the stories that I've that I've been hearing regarding the animation studio Mappa have can have kind of have kind of colored the film, or sorry, not fi- not film, colored the series. But it's a pretty it's a pretty brisk um, run. I think I think it's only like five episodes. And if you're if you're looking for if you're looking for a de- a detail a um, detailed and realistic account of the of the first African samurai, this ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is more this is more or less a um in the in the vein of a redemption story. You know, some someone who someone who's seen who's seen some shit and 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 be, and became a hermit coming out coming out of it to do the right thing. You know, a sta- a a pretty standard setup. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. My my story is a redemption story at heart too, so I think I should check it out. Yeah, I it's, it's that kind that kind of redemption story is pretty is pretty common when it comes to when it comes to samurai fiction as a whole. Um, yeah. Which leads me to ask one uh, if there was one other um, type of media that served as an inspiration, and that is a lot of um, Kurosawa's work. I get that a lot, mm-hmm. but I've only seen Seven Samurai from Kurosawa, and that is definitely an inspiration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. Uh... I need to watch more of his stuff. I do. I do reference his images, though. Like I look at. I look at his imagery uh, mm-hmm. when I'm coming up with inspiration and ideas because you know he, uh, you know his cinematography is you know it's beautiful. So I kind of want to try and get a similar aesthetic with my art style. But uh, you know, so it's it's getting there. I'm building up to it. But, uh... The funny thing about it is, um, Kurosawa fancied himself an editor more than a director, and he's jokingly remarked that the only reason that he that he um that he di- that he did filmmaking was so they had he had an excuse to edit things <laughs> interesting I, ne- I didn't know that um though he's al- he's also said that he made more money off the royalties from the magnificent 7 than he did on the original 7 samurai so i don't know <laughs> oh wow okay well hey good for him <laughs> but um uh-huh. When it, but when it came to when it came to um when it came to develop when it came to developing this idea this idea of of the of the re- of the redeemed of the um the man the man the man seeking redemption um mm-hmm. there's been some there's been some parallels between that have that people that a lot of um scholars have drawn between. A lot of a lot of samurai films and a lot of westerns. Mm-hmm. Um, some pe- some people draw, and obviously the fa- obviously the fact that um, the Magnificent Seven is a we- is a western adaptation of the Seven Samurai is a case in point in that regard. Mm-hmm. But what? But um, would you would you say that would you say that there's some elements of of a of a western in terms of in terms of storytelling? In 
in in Shotgun Samurai's DNA? Oh, actually, uh, it's interesting that you say that because I too uh, kind of subscribe to the idea that samurai and Western like cowboys, I come from a very similar similar place. I heard I actually I heard Kurosawa was inspired by a lot of like Western cowboy films. And he pretty much I mean, and during that time is when like the samurai mythology was kind of established. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of crossover between cowboys and samurai in terms of like, you know, the lone warrior going from town to town, you know, speaks says says few words, you know. Beat lets his gun do the talking. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of that, yeah, I I always kind of felt like uh, like I was kind of uh, just because you know being you know born and raised in America, you know I have that uh, you know cowboy western kind of you know mythology built into me, mm -hmm. uh, and you know being having family in Japan and being influenced by the Japanese samurai movies, I see a lot of the similarities between the two. And I just feel like, um, yeah, I always think of him as either a cowboy or a samurai, depending on what kind of situation he's in. Almost. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess the answer is uh, yes. And there is a lot of uh, Western inspiration in uh, yeah. Shotgun Samurai. Like like I said, it's it's always it's always a case of 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 that kind of cross pollination. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what I what I do what I do find what I do find interesting is for for start for starters, um, go, going with going with a at least in the panels I'm seeing going with a very um, manga aesthetic with these very horizontally designed um, um, pan um, paneling and one thing I'm curious about is is was was that was that something that was on that was a artist call or was that something that you were leaning to when get when giving suggestions oh I'm also the artist hmm. ah yes so so I guess uh, yes it is both artist and writers call yeah yeah, <laughs> which uh, is hmm? a bit is a is certainly an uncommon thing because a, a lot of times when I've had a lot of times when I've had co um, um comic book creators on the show, more often than not they're um they're the they're the writer and some and someone else is handling the art. Um, mm -hmm. it's not to that's not to say artist writers are an, are a rare are a rarity, but they're cer but they're certainly less common. Um, I gotcha. Oh, I feel special. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I wish I had a writer that can go around uh, promoting my book so I can just draw all day. But uh, <laughs> nope, I got to do both. Nope, that's uh, my fault. <laughs> yeah. But one thing I'm one thing I'm curious about since you since you are an a artist writer is which which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Oh my god, that's a good question. Um, you mean like, do I write it like, uh, in terms of me? What do I feel inside my heart? I mean, I mean, do you, do you end up do you end up writing a, do you end up writing a script and then and then tr and then trying to build the art around around that, or do you do or do you do the art and then try and build the script around it? Oh, that um, definitely. Uh, in the beginning, it was art first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just kind of see where it goes, but uh, that then I started to write more, and now I found it much easier to write the script first mm -hmm. because I can correct mistakes much easier with text than I can with actual drawings. So, yeah, I, right now I map I, I I I try to write as much as possible so that when I do my artwork, I don't have to think about the storyline i can just focus on what looks cool all right i i got i got gotcha. you now when it when it comes to when it comes to the set the setup that you ha that you have um 
I can I kind of touched on this when when talking about that whole futuristic yet feudal vibe, but mm -hmm. but how far how far along would you say the technology level is compared to um this particular era in Japan? Oh, everything is very much in the past. You know, swords. No one even knows about gunpowder. Uh, so shotgun samurai's weapon is very strange to everybody who sees it. They actually consider it uh, mythological, like a dragon sword, they call it. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, basically, everyone's just swords, bows and arrows, all that kind of stuff. No electricity. Very old Japan. All right, I can get, I can, I can get that. Um, and at the, at the, at the same, and I'm guessing that's also the reason why in the um, kick in the, I keep saying Kickstarter, but in the in the Indiegogo page, you brought you brought up the whole Legend of the Dragon Sword. Yes, yes, yes. That's uh, I thought that would help uh, give people uh, set people in the right mood and like know what kind of atmosphere this the book is gonna be. Is it too much of a spoiler to ask whether or not eight whether or not the dragon will make an appearance, or is it just to reference why people call um, the shotgun samurai's weapon the dragon sword? Um, yeah, it's fine. I can answer that. Uh, yeah, it's there's no dragon. It's um, yeah, it's pretty much yeah, just a myth, a myth that people have come up with surrounding the sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, cause, yeah. Hmm? And I'm get I'm, I'm guessing that I'm guessing that you're that um, there's not a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of plans on on, on hit on him carefully tracking how many sh how many shells he has, um, for dramatic purposes. Oh um, no, I didn't put that in there because uh, that that also raises a whole lot more questions that. Uh, I feel like would kind of hinder the story if I had to answer them. Mm -hmm. Like, where does he get his ammo from? Like, how does he carry it if he's not if he doesn't have any kind of boxes or something? So it's kind of a, there's that kind of myth mythological aspect to his weapon. Uh, you know, there there is an answer. Like, if I ever get to the very end of this whole storyline, which is like ten volumes away, maybe maybe I'll give the answer to that. I don't know if I'm in the right mood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so, but there is kind of a, it is kind of like um, anime kind of infinite ammo style shotgun. Yeah. Um, of, co of course, he's, of course, there's still, there, based on the design, there's clear, there's clearly the fact that it still has to be pumped, but, yes. um, but we're not, we're you not. Gotta have with... a pump. We're not dealing with that kind of resource management. No, no, we're not. Um, but what now? When you had put when you had put the thing on on web on webtoon, um, were there any were there any um were there any major takeaways from the from the feedback you got there, or was it? I know some people put their stuff on webtoon, and the feedback is kind of cold. Yeah. Um. So far, uh, the the feedback on Webtoon, like the thing about that, it was it was just really hard to get eyes on it. I had no idea how to advertise it at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was gaining like maybe ten subs per update. I don't know if that's a lot or a little. I have no idea how what to gauge it with. But uh, you know, so, um, but there, I always had a fairly high review. You know, it was always in the nine point. Nine point, you know, five something, usually stars, mm -hmm. and the comments were always uh, very favorable. So I was very happy with the uh, the audience that I I, got, I gathered on webtoons. It's just that it wasn't um. Yeah, I wanted to do a lot more with this book, so mm -hmm. that's kind of why I went to crowdfunding for like the last uh, last chunk of the storyline. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, you know, everyone on webtoon they they were very nice, very good. Good audience over there. Now, uh, now you you put in the Indiegogo page that th that um the book itself is ninety percent complete. 
Um, yes. Even with that, do you pl do you plan on do you plan on going back going back to previous chapters and kind of um, kind of re kind of refining some of the er some of the early pages? I thought about that, but uh, if I do that, it'll it'll take way too long. I mean, I will touch I will touch certain things up mm -hmm. for sure, like stuff that I find like completely inexcusable at this point. But uh, I, I realize there, there's a point in time where you kind of, especially with the, this is basically 10 books I'm compiling together into one. Mm -hmm. So I see it as those books are already finished. So that's kind of where my art was at the time. So, yeah, I'm kind of just uh, going to preserve them as a relic of history. I, I can yeah. I can cert I can certainly get that it and mm -hmm. that might be that might be for the best given the oh, given the old adage that an artist is their own worst critic. Exactly, I had to learn to uh, I had to get over that perfectionist mindset a long time ago if I wanted to actually produce anything. Well, an well, an artist who is a perfectionist is an artist who um who who is never able to release something, which is what which mm -hmm. is why I'm. I'm pretty sure I'll reach retirement age by the time Star Citizen releases. Oh my god, Star Citizen. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I had, for years, I had joked that I'd, prob that I'd probably reach retire that I probably would reach retirement age before Duke Nukem Forever released. Except then it did, and everybody wishes it didn't. Um, yeah, exactly. I was like, ooh, kind of a double-edged switch right I, there. And I'm fairly certain that I will be six feet in the ground by the time Yandere Simulator is finished. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but uh, <laughs> that is a long, uh, that is a long, long dumbass story, yeah. which will never be finished because it because um it because its creator doesn't know how to code and doesn't know how to take critique. Oh, that's the worst! Not being able to take like critique, especially if you don't know how to do something. Yep. Yeah. Well. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he changes and uh, you get your story. Um, I don't care. I don't care about the game in that in that regard. I just I just like I just like watching the dumpster fire. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> same, same. Oh, it's thing. one of those things. Yeah. Uh. Um. Now, you've now you've had um you've had several you've had, you've had several alt alternate covers um set up. Um, mm -hmm. one by one by one by Jose Garcia, one by Mangaka Odi, one by, and one by um Joel Ball. Um, mm -hmm. how did you how did you end up getting in contact with with them? And what and um do you recall do you recall what it was like pitching this particular idea to them? Oh, actually, um, it wasn't uh, yeah, like these these guys they were very uh open most of them i just kind of like odie and uh jose those two i was kind of just stalking on twitter waiting for them to say they had an opening for commissions and i just jumped in there and <laughs> threw cash at them and they gave me a cover <laughs> joe ball he was the first one I, I got um it was when i was first learning how to do everything and i just put out some uh, a post on twitter saying hey does anyone know an artist that i can use for my cover and a lot of people you know, came in, and a lot of people also suggested that I get a cover from Joe Ball, and I liked his work, so I was like, you know what? I messaged him and was like, hey, what do I got to do to get you to do a cover for me? And he said, money. And I was like, ah, I understand. Yeah, so that'll, yeah that'll, that'll do it. it. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Like, that's, a, that's another thing in the, in the art world. Money is, uh, money makes the art world go round. If you're not sure how to get something done, just throw money at it. Oh, it, seems, it seems to work every. That seems to be the solution every time I play Civilization. Oh yeah. <laughs> the only thing I know about Civilization is that Gandhi is surprisingly new cappy. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's one of those unfortunate th things. <laughs> Although like, one, of the early, one of the earlier games had Elvis as one of your advisors. Are you kidding me? That's hilarious. <laughs> I wish I played that one. Uh, 
and there and there's all there's also the fact that um Montezuma is a dickhead. Oh yeah. The Montez so I guess Montezuma's revenge they took a little seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I su I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um but in ter in terms of be in terms of being a a um art a art a a artist writer, um were there were there ever any indications where you ended up um drawing or writing yourself into a corner and you had to back up? Ah uh, yes, I remember a time I drew myself into a corner, and that was terrible. That's when I learned to write. <laughs> uh, I had to, I had to scrap about uh, what was it five pages that I already drew. I spent like, oh, is that almost like a little little over half a month on those pages? And I was like, and I had to make that uh, tough this tough call that um, to scrap those pages. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I'm glad I did. That was a that was a terrible idea of what I was going for. It was just cheesy and uninteresting. And did you di did you dip into? Were you more were you more of an artist or a writer before you started the project? Because I'm curious which one you had to le you had to learn from experience through this. That's a good question. Um, I would say I was more of a definitely more of an artist for sure. Uh, but I, I was also an idea man, so I had good ideas, but never actually wrote them down and like refined them. So I had to learn how to do that a lot of how to like get the ideas down, refine it, and outline the whole story, like the technicalities of writing. That's what I really had to learn. And in terms of art, also you know I I did a lot a lot of studying to improve my artwork as well, but. I would say I definitely started off as an artist more and then had to learn writing. But I always had the ideas. Mm -hmm. Um and when it came, when it came to when it some some people when they have when they have ideas when they are that ideas guy they'll they'll have somebody that they'll bounce ideas off of so that they don't um go too far over the edge. Did you mm -hmm. have anybody like that? Yes, I did. Uh, you know that friend of mine who I came up with the, that did the cosplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Bas he's bas he still is my uh, my my the guy I bounce off of. You know, I always come up with a uh, with some stuff, and I go and I and I always send it to him. I guess I, I he's kind of like my editor right now. I guess you can say, um, editor or even like co writer. Uh, usually, I'll you know I'll come up with some ideas, write it out, and then I'll send it to him, and then he'll either come back to me with his own ideas attached onto it or tell me this is out of character uh this this he would never do this or so yeah so so he's been like so yeah without him i don't think i could the story would not be nearly as good as it is now in my opinion mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. were there were there any egregious cases where there was an idea that there was an idea that you wanted to implement and he um and he told, and he had told you that's a ter that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Um, let me think. Like, not not nothing too egregious. Like, there were some ideas that I thought were just kind of funny, and then he said that would just ruin the whole like story. <laughs> so I understood, and I said no. But um, there were some ideas that I just had. I just had. I was terrible at explaining, and he thought they were really bad. So then I just kind of, you know, hid away for like a couple weeks and I drew them out and then I showed it to him. And then usually that's when he uh, he understands and he accepts them. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, usually that's how, how I handle it. If there's an idea that I want to do that he doesn't like, then I'll just draw it anyway because I'm doing the artwork. So I'm in charge. So he can't say nothing. Hey, hey, hey. See now he's now he's likely gonna hear now he's likely gonna hear this and then I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to play peacemaker again. Oh damn it! You're right. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, he's done. We we go way back. He's done way worse to me. So. So which one of uh, you is the Abbot and which one of you is the Costello? I'm not sure. Which one's the straight man? Which one's the funny man? Um. 
depends on depends on which joke depends on which joke it is joke it is but it's usually it's usually Costello it's usually Costello who's the straight man oh, okay okay yeah well then we're both Abbott <laughs> <laughs> um now with with that with that kind of thing in mind um because of the fact that you're going that you're going manga did that also play a factor into whether or not you were going to use color? Um, I think that the fact that I, at least when I first started, I did not have a very good uh, eye for color. So I, that was, it kind of just started off from there. Uh, and also, yeah, it's, it's a lot quicker to produce in black and white and it's manga. So I just saw there was a lot more benefits, at least in our, in our situation, to go with black and white. And uh, since I didn't have an eye for color, I kind of sought after an inking style that served black and white anyway. So I feel like I kind of, I kind of just molded into this path based on my uh, my situation. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. And with and with that be that being said. Um, even though, even though this, because of the size of the book, this is one question that I'd feel remiss if I didn't ask. Do you, is it, is it going to be going straight, is it going to be going straight into things or do you plan on putting a bit of a table of contents to separate, um, chapters? Oh, there will be, um, I do intend to, like, in between each chapters, yeah, like, uh, putting like a little, li little break because, uh. Like I said, this is actually ten books together, and I did create covers for each chapter. Because uh, I originally intended to print these as, like, floppies. But, um, you know, things led into this, and so I'm going to put it all in one book. But I would like to use those images to divide up the chapters. So, yeah, there'll be a little break. I can, I can certainly get behind that. Mm -hmm. Um... Now, what are, what are you shooting for as far as a release window for the project? Uh, right now, I um, on the campaign, I put December because I wanted to make sure I had uh, enough um, enough leeway for any unintended consequence and unintended variables, like mis things that I I had no idea would happen. Um, but uh, then the artwork is going to be wrapping up soon. I only have uh, three pages left to draw. So once I do that, then I'm just going to, you know, kind of go back, uh, make sure everything's together, format it. So I'm... So hopefully, if everything goes right, could be October. But uh, like I said... Just in case I need to, I'll, uh, it will definitely be there by December. Yeah, and in in lieu of, in lieu of um, jinxing. Yes. Nope, can't be too can't be too careful on that kind of thing. Exactly. That's the one thing I learned with anything is that uh, there's always um, there's always something around the corner that you don't expect, and yeah. uh, I don't want to. You know, this is my first time actually producing uh, this book on this large of a scale, and with the and like a crowdfund with the, this many people. Like, so I want to make sure I get it absolutely right the first time. Mm -hmm. Especially, especially since it only takes it only takes one ba one um, bad in one bad incident to co to color people. I know I know <laughs> there's been some cases where where books have gotten late, and that's and that's kind of soured people on on backing future books exactly yes and i, I completely understand mm -hmm. so i i just want to make sure that i uh, i don't fall into that category and i'm considered one of the uh when people think of me they say wow that guy actually fulfilled on time i like him that's what i'm shooting for i can get i can certainly get behind that um mm -hmm. But with all of that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to 
come all the way up to the temple and enjoy the madness at play here. Oh, thank you for uh, thank you for setting this up and having the show. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As that I sounds often, great. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> I like it. Me. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the, who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>